Hey guys, thanks for tuning in again. Here we go for another Five Favorite Friday, this time for the month of March. Where has a where has this year gone? Like, it's already April. Like, that's a fourth of the year already gone. What is going on? Like, I, I just feel like I just had my birthday, and it's... My birthday is in August, and it's already April. I don't know what's going on. So, today I'm going to talk about five of my favorite things right now. You guys follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or on here. You guys know that I travel a lot all over the city, doing hair for events and appearances and stuff like that. So I'm always trying to find ways to carry everything I have, but keep it nice and organized so I can look for it and see it and grab it. So my first two items are going to be things that help me organize all my hair stuff. And here's number five. So this is from the Container Store. This is... Um, this is just a small storage box. It has six compartments. It has dividers. The dividers do not move. So that's one thing to be wary of is that you cannot change the size or shape of these at all. They're set. I have two of them and I use them for my bobby pins and my hair pins and everything when I go on set. This one is just bobby pins. So I have white ones. I have matte dark brown ones. I have matte blonde ones. I have matte brown ones. I have big black ones and I have big bronze ones down here. And then in this guy here, I have three inch hairpins, small hairpins, geisha pins, uh, my Japanese hairpins right here. I then have some bobby pins, just regular run of the mill bobby pins and pop clips. I really love these containers. They're super affordable. They were $3 a piece. I've had them for about a year, if not longer, and I love them. They're great. My only thing about them is sometimes, as you can see here, bobby pins or pins kind of get stuck. Um, I mean, you open it and you can kind of put the pins back and, you know, it'll close and it'll seal up again. I used to have one of those big craft things for like beads and stuff, and the dividers would always fall out and the pins would always knock over the edges. And I find that besides the occasional pin, like you guys just saw, these are very strong and sturdy. See, nothing kind of fell out. I also really like these because I don't think you guys can really tell. There's like hair dye on it. That's wonderful. I don't know if you guys can tell or not, but the bottom of them, the corners are rounded. They're not a square corner. So when you reach in, you can easily cup and pick things up out of them. I really like them. They're the perfect size. They fit both in my bag, either like this or like this together. I can just pick them up out of my drawer and see, okay, well, I need to put more bobby pins. I need to put more matte, matte black pins in here before I go on location because I can see through and I can see my stock and have everything at hand. So these are from the container store, $3. I'm going to put the information about them in the box below. Number four is also a storage item and it is by Sistema. I think that's how you pronounce it. And I got them at TJ Maxx, but I've seen them at multiple TJ Maxx's and Marshall's and Home Goods. And I've seen them also at like Target and stuff like that. So they're just little boxes like this. I think they're originally for sandwiches. There is a third one that's pink. I don't know where she is. I can't find it. But um, as you can see here, I have um, metal duckbill clips in here, and then I have my larger crocodile clips in here. Again, I love these things. They're the perfect size for clips and accessories. You can put hair ties in them. You can put even little tiny samples of product, or you can put makeup, lipsticks. There's so many options with little storage containers, and you just kind of have to reach out of the box. Like These are originally for sandwiches, like I said but I'm repurposing them for clips when I go on location. It doesn't really matter what the label says it's for, it's how you can use it yourself. Um, so then the number three is a marker. Now, I'm one, you guys are probably wondering why I'm like, why am I featuring a marker? I have been trying to find the perfect shade to root synthetic wigs with for years. You can dye wigs with writ dye or with clothing dye for acrylic and stuff like that. You can dye wigs doing that. However, it's very, very hard, pretty much impossible to just go in and do a root because when you rinse it, it's going to tint the foundation of the wig and all of that hair. So I personally like to just draw them in with a marker, especially a permanent marker. Um, occasionally they will start to fade a little bit and if you overuse alcohol based products such as hairsprays or setting sprays that will tend to make it run or fade as well 
So that is something to be careful of. But these are the Faber-Castell markers. This is the color 178. And I'm going to put a picture up right here of what this looks like on blonde synthetic hair. It's not a solid 613. It's a blended color. I think it's like a, a 613 and like a 24, maybe like a 16. It's all kind of blended together, a really pretty golden color. And I went in with one of these buggers and I rooted the entire thing. Every single weft, the whole front, I rooted the whole thing with this. And one marker did the whole wig. I was very, very surprised that I was able to get the whole wig rooted with one marker. Take small sections and you go in and you paint it in. It's a marker. You draw it. You draw it in. I really like them because they do have this fine point tip right here, which was really good when I was doing the front hairline because I didn't want to get the marker on the lace or on the knots. So I was just very, very careful with the fine tip, just kind of drawing it in very gently like that. And... I think it looked gorgeous. I got lots of comments about the wig on Instagram and on Facebook. So I figured I would feature the Faber-Castell marker 178 here. Um, they do have other, there are other colors of markers out there. And I'm sure you guys are wondering, why can't I just use a brown Sharpie? The problem with Sharpies and other cheaper non-artist markers is the undertone is what's going to pull. A brown Sharpie might look brown as poop on a piece of paper, but the second you put that on blonde hair or synthetic hair of any kind, you're pulling that undertone. And I always find that brown Sharpies look red on wigs. Now, a black Sharpie will be fine. Black is black. It's fine. But with the browns, I find that the cheaper markers tend to pull the undertone, which isn't what I want. So I found this, which is the perfect dark golden blonde color. And um, the store where I bought this in the city didn't have many other brown shades that were in this family. I'm trying to find another brand or perhaps another store that has a wider selection of this type of marker since I, t I like the marker I just I need to find some darker colors some browns some off blacks stuff like that that I just I can't use a sharpie for because it pulls too red so two is actually a product um uh, number two is actually a hair product for human hair it is by decoy and it is called the elixir now um Decoy is um, a company of hair products. They have an amazing hairspray. They have spray wax, mud, a regular wax, the elixir. My friend and colleague, Danny Coy, actually founded this company a few years ago, and he manufactures his own products. For more information, I'll put in the box below. But I really love the elixir. Danny told me that he invented the elixir for human hair wigs. They need to put some moisture back in it, but they can't put too much weight or product in it. The elixir is very, very lightweight. You can, um, I mean, I have thick, dense hair, as you guys know, and I was able to put this in my hair multiple times a day. It never felt heavy. It never got stringy and piecey and gross. My hair felt weightless, and it was shiny and soft and resilient, and I loved it. So I really, really, really like the elixir. I'm swearing by it right now. I don't have it in my hair right now. For about two weeks, I was using the Elixir and his other products as well just to try them out. I will be doing a video review of his full line of products very soon. So I have been trying them out, and the Elixir is definitely the standout to me. Um, I really like it. It smells pretty good, too, and it doesn't build up, like I said. So the Elixir is great. I'll put information about it down in the box. Number one is soap. <laughs> so my best friend Ruth Ann was in town last weekend. That's why I didn't have a Friday video. So I'm apologizing you guys. I'm so sorry I didn't have a Friday video. She got here at seven o'clock in the morning on Friday and it was just, we hit the ground running and we didn't sleep until she left Monday morning. Like it was, we went in girl. So we went to Lush together and I'd never been to Lush and she, her and her roommate are both big fans of Lush and I'd never been before and there's one on Union Square. So we took a little walking adventure over there and I'm trying out all these soaps and I'm smelling them and everything and I'm like, they all kind of smell kind of like earthy, like I'm just not a big fan of that. And then I picked up a bar of like this really cute yellow kind of color soap and I smelled it and it smelled delicious. It's, ugh, it's so, such an amazing scent. It's the Sexy Peel Soap and it's fresh organic orange and lemon juice to help you take off your clothes. And um, they come in a wrapper like this. You can, the, the great thing about Lush is that you can buy ounces of the soap. You can buy the full bar, you can buy a little piece like I did, you can buy in between. It's great. It's all customizable. 
Um, this was $4.64. Um, it's 6.16 uh, pounds. It says it's $29 a pound for this soap. Um, oh, it smells so good. It's a very citrusy, lemony scent. However, I really like it because there are granules in here that buff and kind of exfoliate your hands when you use the soap. And um, I'm not usually a huge bar soap person. I think that this lush, sexy peel may convert me because, oh, it just smells so good. And um, I kind of wish that they had it in a body wash so I could use it as a body wash. I'm all about using a bar soap on my hands, but my I can't take a shower with bar soap. It, I just, I can't do it. It's awkward to me. So... I wish they had this in a liquid soap, so if anyone out from Lush is watching, please make a liquid body wash of the Sexy Peel Lemon Scent, please. It smells so good. I'd be forever grateful, and I'd come in and I'd whore you guys out all the time, so please do it. I can't stop. It, I'm like a drug addict. Like I'm, like, I'm like huffing a soap. You know, it's like, I can't help it, though. It smells so good, and that's why it's my number one. It just smells so good. It changed my life. I've been using it for about a week now, and ugh. Oh, it smells so good. I love it. Okay, thank you guys again for tuning in for my Five Favorite Friday video. Be sure to check out all my fun social media stuff down in the box. On every website except for Facebook, I am Wigging Out BZ. On Facebook, I'm Bobby Pins. You can also check out bobbypins.com for my wide, large selection of wigs and styling products. Um, I'm also going to be doing a lot more tutorials very, very, very shortly once your Paul's Drag Race is over. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Keep an eye out for those new tutorials, and I will see you guys again on Wednesday. Wednesday for another Wiggy Weavy Wednesday and a coffee and a kiki. So stay tuned. Thank you guys so much. Have a great weekend. Bye.